The listening test is about 50 minutes. There are six parts in listening test. You will have about six minutes to listen to each passage and answer the questions. The passage will be played once. Part 1, Listening to Problem Solving. Instructions. You will hear a single conversation in three sections. You will hear each section only once. After each section, you will hear two or three questions. You will hear the questions only once. You will have to choose the best answer to each question. Total time for this task is around five minutes. You will get total eight questions for this task. Morning, doctor. Good morning. My daughter Dana hasn't been feeling well and she has a fever. Can you please have a look? Let me see. Hi, Dana. Can you please take off your jacket and lie down on the bed? How is she? Her throat looks red. I think she has an infection. I will prescribe her some antibiotics. She should take them twice a day. How long does she need to take them? About a week, but she can continue for another week if she doesn't feel better. She should probably rest for a few days, too, and not go to school. When should we come back again? I want to see her next week, but if she gets worse, you can come and see me any time. Thank you so much, doctor. What did the doctor ask the patient to remove? What is the purpose of the visit? You will hear the second section of the conversation shortly. Good evening. Nice to see you again. How is Dana? Not fine. She still has a sore throat. Let me see. She has a moderate fever, too. The medicines didn't work at all. Okay. Maybe she has a different problem. Even I feel the same. The temperature is not too high, around 99 degrees Fahrenheit. Her blood pressure is fine. The throat looks a bit scruffy. It's not a good symptom. Yes, it has been quite bad. Did she sweat and shiver also? Not sweating, but she feels somewhat cold under a fan. Okay, these are symptoms of malaria. I would suggest some blood tests for her. It's just precautionary, as there has been a spurt of malaria cases since last month. Oh, I see. I'm prescribing three medicines and a syrup. The number of dots in front of each tells you how many times in the day you've to give her. For example, the two dots here mean you've to take the medicine twice in the day, one in the morning and one after dinner. Okay, I got it. How can the doctor behavior be best described? Why did the patient meet the doctor again? Which of the following statement is true?
You will hear the third section of the conversation shortly. Oh, hello again. How are you now? She's feeling better now. Okay, that's good news. Let me check your fever first. Um, can't find the thermometer. Sir, here it is. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Let me examine her properly. Oh, great. Your body temperature is normal now. I don't see any symptoms of malaria now. That's great to know. Do you have any questions? No, doctor. Thank you so much. Don't take medicines now, and no need to come again. In case the fever or any other symptom relapses, do call me immediately. Sure. Thank you, doctor. Goodbye, sweetie. Take care. What was the conversation about? Why will Dana's mother urgently call the doctor? What was the doctor unable to find? Part 2, Listening to a Daily Conversation Instructions. You will hear a conversation followed by five questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hi Perry. How are you? Hey, I'm good. What about you? I'm fine. So, in which company are you working? I am working with Concentrix. What is your post? I'm in the security department. That's great. Not that great. Why so? I'm not that happy with this post. Which is the perfect post for you? I like managerial post than security. Why don't you try in some other company? I am planning to do that. There is an opening for the managerial post in FIS. Could you please arrange an interview for me in that company? Sure, but you can also go directly for the interview. Okay, that's great. At what time do I have to go? You can go at around 10 in the morning. Okay, I will be there at 10. Perfect, but please call them first. Do you have their number? If yes, then please share. Sure, it's 98187. Can I take your name over the phone? Yeah, no problem. Just tell them that you got to know about it from me. Okay, thank you so much. What is the relation between the speakers?
In which company is Para working? What does Barry have to say about the job? At what time will the interviewee be for the confab? Whose reference will the respondent give? Part 3, Listening for Information Instructions, you will hear a conversation followed by six questions. Listen to each question, you will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hello ma'am, how may I help you? Hello sir, I want to know about the membership fees, and fitness packages. Please, do the honor to fill the form. What is it about? It is a general assessment form regarding your body conditions. Okay, give me a few minutes. All right. Now that we have completed your fitness assessment, I have a few suggestions for you. Tell me, what exactly are you aiming for? I mean, a lean and toned physique or muscular look or what? Okay, I just really need to lose weight before my wedding. It's due next month and I want to look my best. Congratulations, ma'am. You are at the right place at the right time. Our fitness center will definitely help you. We have the latest gym equipment and many different activities you can choose from. I'd love to do some yoga and Pilates. These are good, but you need some active exercising too if you want to lose weight faster. Like Zumba or aerobics? Yes, yes, exactly. You can also use one of our exercise machines. You can run on a treadmill or ride a stationary bike. I am sure you will enjoy doing this. Great. Should I do some weightlifting as well? It's not necessary. According to your fitness profile, you don't need any muscular strengthening exercises for now. But yes, I would suggest you follow a proper diet plan too. Okay. How many calories should I eat per day? Don't count the calories. Just cut down on sweets and fast food. Okay, it's the most difficult part as I am a big foodie. But don't worry, I'll do my best to eat sensibly. I have to look my best on my special day. Great. That's the spirit. Ready to start? The lockers are right this way. What did the man suggest?
How did the man meet the woman? Why is the woman keen on joining the gym? What did the man say after examining the fitness profile? How many calories should the woman take on a daily basis? What does the woman need to avoid? Part 4, Listening to a News Item Instructions, you will hear a news item once. It is about 1.5 minutes long. Then five questions will appear. Choose the best way to complete each statement from the drop-down menu. The owner of the home featured in the film A Christmas Story is allowing fans to spend the night in the iconic house for a price. Brian Jones, 42, a Florida resident, said he used to sell replica leg lamps from the 1983 film, and he ended up buying the Cleveland home used for exterior shots when it was posted on eBay in 2004. I just thought, that is the opportunity of a lifetime right there. That won't come along twice, Jones told WGN-TV. Jones said he spent years making the inside of the house look like the interior from the film, which was mostly shot on a soundstage. What I've tried to do is basically create the experience when you're coming here. It fe feels like their own house, Jones said. Jones is now allowing fans to pay to spend the night in the home, but the owner charges up to $3,000 during the busy Christmas season. He said the stays will be cheaper during the less busy times of the year. You can sit on the couch, grab the leg lamp, crawl under the sink, do whatever. You get to basically play in the house, he said.
Part 5, Listening to a Discussion Instructions, you will listen to a two minutes video. Then eight questions appear. Choose the best way to answer each question. To talk about the topic, go ahead and introduce yourselves one more time for us. Hello, Miranda. Larry Fisher, the Dean of Student Life at West Michigan Aviation Academy, a free charter high school located at the airport. And I'm Heidi Kate, uh, Superintendent and Special Education Director of Integrity Education Schools, Hope Academy and Lighthouse Academy here in Kent County. And I'm Kurt Koiker, and I teach fourth grade in Hudsonville Public Schools. Now people might say, why would you have a fourth grade teacher talking about bullying? Is it happening in our elementary schools? It is happening in our elementary schools. And I think that's one of the key things is to first recognize that bullying is a problem. Uh, one of the things that we found that works best is when we work with kids and help them to figure out what bullying truly is and what their part is in preventing it and reporting it. You know, I'm hearing a lot on see something, say something. It yeah, used to be right. Homeland Security, mm -hmm. but now we're taking that message into the schools. Absolutely. How do we empower kids mm -hmm. to speak up? If they see something happening that's making them uncomfortable, if they know that what's happening is wrong to another child, where do they go with that information? Mm -hmm. I, I think for um, it's really important for us as, as schools, and, and you know, we probably will touch on parents, but let's talk about uh, school officials and staff to have systems in place um, that um, there are different ways and avenues for students to come um, to be able to do that in a way that's safe that there's not a, a retaliation type thing that might happen um, and yet there's a strong stance against it um, I know uh, we've had um, a variety of different um, examples and we try to cut it early um, call students in really we take a, a reconciliation relationship approach and um, help them to understand that that's not appropriate social behavior now, Larry, I know times have changed mm -hmm. because it's easy for parents to say, you know what, everybody gets bullied. Mm -hmm. There's always a bully and there's always a kid getting bullied. Kids just have to toughen up. What do you say to that? Well, there may be some truth to that, but that doesn't make it okay. Mm -hmm. The most important players are really the observers. Often a bully will do that in front of one or more other people. Often they won't do it in front of a school official because that's usually going to result in a pretty immediate consequence. So the most important players to get on your team are the third people, the, the, the other folks, to have them help you to say things like, that's not cool, that's not what we do, take the victim out of there, then report at some point, at, but, but right then, intervene right then, and, and that stu study show really helps in those situations to let the bully know that's not an okay behavior, that's not acceptable at our school. So we need to incorporate other students as part of the team. I think administrators Positive at all schools, it, it has to be, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, all the administrators at all the schools are, are conscious of it, want to do something about it, um, but they're not always going to be the first-hand witnesses of it. In fact, rarely are we the first-hand So we need our kids it. to band together, to Absolutely. stand up for what's right.
Part 6, Listening for Viewpoints. Instructions, you will hear a report once. It is about three minutes long. Then six questions will appear. Choose the best way to answer each question from the drop-down menu. The earthquake occurred on 25 April 2015 at 11.56 a.m. NST at a depth of approximately 15 kilometers, which is considered shallow and therefore more damaging than quakes that originate deeper in the ground, with its epicenter approximately 34 kilometers east-southeast of Yung Nepal, lasting approximately 50 seconds. The earthquake was initially reported as 7.5 MW by the United States Geological Survey before it was quickly upgraded to 7.8 MW. The China Earthquake Network Center, CENC, reported the earthquake's magnitude to be 8.1 MW. The Indian Meteorological Department, IMD, said two powerful quakes were registered in Nepal at 0611 UTC and 0645 UTC. The first quake measured 7.8 MW and its epicenter was identified at a distance of 80 kilometers to the northwest of Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal. Of Nepal. Bharatpur was the nearest major city to the main earthquake, 53 kilometers from the epicenter. The second earthquake was somewhat less powerful at 6.6 MW. It occurred 65 kilometers east of Kathmandu, and its seismic focus lay at a depth of 10 kilometers below the Earth's surface. Over 38 aftershocks of magnitude 4.5 MW or greater occurred in the day following the initial earthquake, including the one of magnitude 6.8 MW. According to the USGS, the earthquake was caused by a sudden thrust or release of built-up stress along the major fault line where the Indian plate carrying India is slowly diving underneath the Eurasian plate, carrying much of Europe and Asia. Kathmandu, situated on a block of crust approximately 120 kilometers wide and 60 kilometers long, rapidly shifted 3 meters, 10 feet, to the south in a matter of just 30 seconds. The risk of a large earthquake was well known beforehand. In 2013, in an interview with seismologist Vinod Kumar Gaur, the Hindu quoted him as saying, Calculations show that there is sufficient accumulated energy in the main frontal thrust now to produce an 8-magnitude earthquake. I cannot say when. It may not happen tomorrow, but it could possibly happen sometime this century, or wait longer to produce a much larger one. According to Brian Tucker, founder of a nonprofit organization devoted to reducing casualties from natural disasters, some government officials had expressed confidence that such an earthquake would not occur again. Tucker recounted a conversation he had had with a government official in the 1990s who said, we don't, have to, we don't have to worry about earthquakes anymore because we already had an earthquake. The previous earthquake to which he referred occurred in 1934.